privilege to share the scripture. This is definitely a scripture that was a turning point for me in my personal life and definitely put me on another, another trajectory uh, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Before this, I was religious, and then after that, I'm like, wow, God has changed my life. So, um, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded uh, you. And surely I will always be, be with you to the very end of the age. Amen. Well, amen. We're going to pause for a moment because today we're going to talk about Jesus' movement on display. I believe it's going to be a, a wonderful message and we're going to pray right now because somebody, a, a family, a particular family, <laughs> that's very important that they're here today, uh, are not yet. And so we're going to pray for the Daniel family. Father, we do pray right now that this would be your day that you are exalted, that you are worshipped, that you are praised, that you are um, uh, honored. We thank you for uh, Tremaine and Leone and their four kids. And it seems maybe on some days like this when it's a special one for us to step out in faith, there may be some challenges or some hindrances. Uh, so we ask that you would take all those all away and make it uh, possible for them to be here uh, with us this morning. We love you, Lord. We know you're in complete control of all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, in your friendly messenger, there is a spot there. This is Jesus' movement uh, on display. And maybe the God's word for me today, some ideas that God may speak to your heart, and then an opportunity for you to be a person of, of response, or my personal faith and action is. You write down because of what God says to you today, then this is what uh, you can respond to him with. So Jesus movement on display, I think it was the Tuesday, maybe it was Wednesday morning. Uh, I woke up earlier than my alarm. How many of you woken up, have uh, awakened in the morning and you're thinking, oh no, too early. Well, a couple days prior to that, I woke up two and a half hours early and it wasn't a pleasant experience. Like, no, Lord, not now. But I believe it was on Wednesday that I woke up and automatically a thought came to my head. It was this song and some of you know it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see Jesus. And see that, amen. And see, all that week and, and up to that, I've been thinking about these stories that I've been hearing uh, about those who have come to faith in Christ and they want to be baptized. And I've been thinking about that and I've been praising the Lord and I've been in conversations about that as well. And so as I opened my eyes a little bit, and the thought came in, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see Jesus. And he said to me, I am revealing to you my movement amongst you. Open your eyes, Matthew. And I thought about that song a little bit more and over the few days. And I used to sing that song, uh, I want to see Jesus, I want to see Jesus, I want to see him, you know, high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. I used to think, to, to high and lift it up, oh, there he was on the cross, and then shining in the light of your glory, oh, there he is in the, sitting at the right hand of the Father. You know, we all have images sometimes when we sing certain songs, and that happens just to be um, the song and the thoughts that I had to all of that. But then I thought about it, and I said, you know, these thoughts were incomplete. You know, it's three years ago I shared my conviction that Jesus wants to build his church here in us and through us and into the community and beyond. And I said, what would that look like specifically for Nola Mara? And I remember saying, I don't know. And I saw some of your faces smile. I'm like, hey, that's all right. At least he's being honest. You know? And I said, no, but there was an excitement, there was an expectation that God's going to do something. We don't know what it looks like for us, but God's going to do it because it's Jesus' church. Amen. Amen. And I remember saying, I'll do my part and you do your part and we will see and rejoice in being part of Jesus' movement of making disciples who make disciples. 
And today is what we often call, you know, Baptism Sunday. But I think today should probably be called Response Sunday. Because some people will come forward as a public response. But each one of us has an opportunity to respond. As we do every Sunday and every day the Lord speaks to your heart or reveals himself through your word or through a song or on the radio or as you're watching a clip on the computer. Christine, Truman, and Leone want to be baptized in front of you as a profession of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Diane and Christine want to join us in membership, professing to us that they think and feel as a we are their family. Doesn't that excite you? Doesn't that kind of make your face just want to smile real big? They feel the love. They feel the encouragement. They say, I want to belong to you. I want you to belong to me. You're my family. And they're saying in this membership that we belong to one another as a local body of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Christine then wants to dedicate her daughter Marguerite to the Lord with the help of you, her church family. She says, I want to promise to dedic I dedicate my child to the Lord. And will you help me to reveal Jesus to her? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See, through the eyes of your heart, the Holy Spirit reveals to you that these displays of obedience and intentions that they have, particularly the four right there, are signs of Jesus' movement, a reflection of of our ministry looking like Jesus' ministry. Where people encounter Jesus and they come forward in a public response of intention and obedience. As I learned more about their stories and their journey of faith, I was thinking how the Lord was showing me Him high and lifted up. Shining the light of His glory. Pouring out His love. And his power on all of us together. Do the eyes of your heart see Jesus today? Well, in a short while, what's wonderful, your ears and your eyes will also have the opportunity to be open and see Jesus on display. So it's Baptism Sunday. You know, Christian baptism can seem to be strange. Uh, strange practice for those who do not know or fully understand. I remember when I was 18, I was, and then moving into 19, I was a year into the faith. My parents were being baptized. I was like, huh. And I don't believe I showed up. I can't remember showing up. Because <laughs> a couple years later, I was feeling bad. Because then I was being baptized. And I had a friend that wanted to travel 45 minutes to see it. And another friend came with me and spent the night at my house with my parents. Because we lived at a university campus. And I started thinking, wow, this must be a pretty big deal. So even up to my point of baptism, I knew I was supposed to obey, but I didn't know how significant it was in the Christian life. So the encouragement today is for all of us, wherever we are in our understanding of it, is here is five basic truths about baptism that every Christian should understand, and each one of us should understand it so well that each one of us should be able to share it with other people. So, then, yeah, I can tell you about that, what baptism means. The number one is water baptism is God's idea. See, Jesus, Jesus himself commanded to everyone that whoever they invited to pursue God and everyone who responded by saying, yes, I want to become a Christian and follower of Jesus, well, then you should be baptized. That's what we see in that scripture that our brother read. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So baptism by immersion was God's idea. And Jesus commanded it to be done. And notice the passage is referring to disciples, you know, Christ followers. Jesus is calling people to be Christ followers, not just believers in him, not just labeled Christians or part of a group or part of a church or an attendee. He's saying, I want 
you to make them disciples. That's what I'm calling people, followers of Christ, followers of me. And I want you to teach these young believers, these disciples, to observe all that I have commanded you. So this should draw our attention to want to learn even more, which leads us to the second truth, that water baptism does not, does not save anyone. See, the scriptures are clear. We are to be baptized, but it is not some practice or some ritual that saves anyone. And we know that some churches and some people and some good people who love Jesus somehow believe that baptism is significant for your salvation. But I praise God that there's no tick the boxes to earn approval from God. There's none. You know, the Bible is clear the only way we are saved and the only way we start a relationship with God is by trusting in Jesus and Jesus alone on our salvation. However, if I am a follower of Christ, if I desire to follow the Lord, then I'm going to ask, well, Lord, how am I to be obedient? How shall I follow you? How shall I profess my faith? In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. So you think, well if you, well, if you don't need it for salvation, then why even do it? Why is it even necessary to practice it? Well, that brings us to the third truth of baptism. It's an act of practical obedience. See, when someone becomes a Christian who are saved by faith, they become a child of God. And we, all, we know we've been speaking for a long time all the blessings, what happens to a person when they come to faith. They're transferred from darkness into light. They become a child of God and heir to the kingdom. And the Lord just lathers it up. I believe there's 33 blessings, benefits that come immediately upon your salvation. And the scriptures reveal those. Your eyes are open. There's so much more. And so once you become a child of God, the next step is to ask, well, how do I honor God? How do I begin to live for God? How do I begin to say, I love you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, I just want all of you in my life. It was interesting. Trumaine asked this question on Friday in regards to his journey of faith. How do you continue to stay away from the darkness? And when all of a sudden something pops up here and there, how do you continue to love the Lord and stay right with Him? See, baptism in water is a practical act of obedience. And God makes it clear in the Scriptures it's one of those first steps that can be done soon, if not immediately after your salvation. See, water baptism is one of those intentional demonstrations to God that you are willing to come to Him on His terms. I'm coming to you on your terms, God. You tell me to be baptized, I'm going to be baptized. So often we come to the Lord on our terms, right? And he said, no, 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 no. You need to come to me on my terms. You know, if God asked you to wear certain clothes, if it's said there in the scriptures, I want you to wear these certain clothes, or I want you, or say, hey, listen, no more, I command you not to drink coffee or not to eat broccoli. Some of them are like, yeah. Others are like, well, well. But we would do it. If God made some things very clear, we would say, yes, okay. But the Bible does not say any of that. But the scriptures do say, be baptized through immersion. So a follower of Jesus would say, okay, if my God wants me to be baptized, I will. And then tomorrow when I learn in his word, or, I, or again I hear from uh, his word through a, uh, some online, or a friend shares me God's word. Or in prayer, God reveals his word to you that is in line with the scriptures. You would say, I'm going to obey that then. See, and that's the process of growth. It's in every day. The first step, one of the first steps is to be immersed in water. Because following Christ is a series, a lifelong journey of steps. Matthew 25, 23, there's one interpretation, as I say, but there's many applications to this verse. I'm going to read it and then leave it to you to consider what's the application for you. Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Be faithful in a few things. 
I will make you ruler over many. The fourth truth, the truth of baptism, identifies us with Christ and the church, the body of Christ globally. So when Jesus died and rose again, baptism is a symbol of that. Jesus died and he rose again. It's a symbol of that. And in water baptism, we are saying, I want to follow you, Jesus. And we are saying, I want to identify myself, my purpose, with all the believers in Christ Jesus, everywhere on the earth, both past, present, and future. Romans 6, 3. Have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? Notice we identify with Christ. And I had to write these out. There were several. No, sorry, it's small. But it says, notice, we identify with Christ and his death. And we are identifying with one another. We were joined in baptism. We joined in his death. It's a community. Baptism is a part of how we are joined together. And how we identify with the local and the whole world, the whole church worldwide. It's how we identify, I've been baptized. And how we're an active part of Jesus' movement on display for all open eyes to see. When we take a step out and, and as three of our, our two sisters and our brother go forward in baptism, they're saying, I want to identify with Christ and I want to identify with his body. The fifth truth of baptism is a symbol of our new life. And this is what blesses my soul and moves my heart. Because I remember sometimes, you know, when we get so far away from that time of living in darkness, sometimes we forget the intensity. We forget the pain. We forget the sorrow. Praise God. We, we heal. And we forget a lot of that darkness and everything that led us to realize, man, I'm a sinner. I need to be redeemed. I need help. God, save me. We forget what it was like to drown. And if everybody, if anybody's ever been in a situation where you think you're about to drown, you remember that feeling for a long, long time. And when you get close to an opportunity like that, you remember again what it was like to be lost or to be almost drowned. So baptism is a symbol of our new life. We have this new life in Christ and we go down into the water and that symbolizes our death. To our old way of living. What's our old way of living? Praise God. He tells us. And the video also spoke of it. In Galatians. Chapter 5. 19 to 21. This is what we're, we're to have left. The scriptures say. The acts of the flesh. This old life are obvious. Sexual immorality. Impurity and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred. Discord. Jealousy. Fits of rage. Selfish ambition. Dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, and orgies, and, and the like. And then the scriptures say, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then we come up out of the water, and that symbolizes life, a, a new kind of living. Now that we live to honor God, what does that look like? That's the old life. Now what is coming out and living a new life looks like? The rest of that verse, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, and joy, and peace, and forbearance, kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Romans 6, 4 says, For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And as Jesus, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so now we also may live new lives. When you read that, don't you want to say like, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Amen! Bring it on, world! I'm living for Jesus one step at a time. So baptism by immersion, by pro professing Christ's follower like Christine and Trumaine and Leone, 
today is an important early step in a long, lifelong journey of faithfulness with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, baptism helps pronounce and, and celebrate a new life in Jesus. The passage of the old of self-motivation, purpose, and endeavors for his life, for his purpose, with his intentions, for his glory forever and ever. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, if you're a person who is pursuing God and have not been baptized by immersion, or you still have questions about it, you should certainly talk about it with others and respond as the scriptures commanded. Let us pray together. Father, we ask that you open the eyes of each one of our hearts, Lord. We want and we need to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and your love and stir us to sing in our hearts every day. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. And thank you for allowing us to see a display of Jesus' ministry, Jesus' movement with these acts and intentions of love and faith to you today. Through our brothers and sisters today. In Jesus' name we cry out in praise and thanksgiving. Amen.